Gentleman, gentleman yields back. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Special Counsel Durham, in March of 2019, before releasing the Mueller report to the public, Attorney General Barr released a statement mischaracterizing its findings and conclusions. And shortly thereafter, Attorney General Barr announced that he was investigating the FBI for investigating Putin's interference in the 2016 presidential election. And then in April or May of 2019, Attorney General Barr appointed you to lead that investigation. Isn't that correct? He did appoint me to lead the investigation, yes, sir. And then in October of 2020, uh, uh, Attorney General Barr appointed you as uh, an independent special counsel so that you could continue investigating the origins of the Russia, Russia, Russia investigation once Trump was out of office, correct? I was, I was appointed uh, special counsel in October, yes. And by that time, your investigation had already cost the American taxpayers over six and a half million dollars, isn't that correct? Um, at that point, probably not, no. Well, at this point, how much has it cost? As I understand the figure, having looked at it, it's around six and a half million dollars. Um, and, and after three and a half years of investigation and six and a half million dollars of taxpayer money spent, your investigation led to the indictment of only three individuals, correct? That's correct. Well, it's indictment contrary, of, and indictment contrary of to the fervent prayers of some on this panel, uh, former FBI Director Jim Comey and former CIA Director John Brennan were not among those three who were indicted. Isn't that correct? That's correct. And to the extreme disappointment of some on this panel, your investigation failed to produce indictments against Hillary Clinton, correct? That's correct. Didn't indict Barack Obama. That's correct. Didn't in indict Joe Biden. That's correct. Couldn't even indict Hunter Biden. We didn't correct? investigate Mr. Hunter Biden. And of your three prosecutions, one ended with a guilty plea to an unrelated, uh, a, a unrelated to the origins of the FBI investigation, and that individual received a probated sentence with no jail time, correct? Parts of that are correct. And the other two men you prosecuted went to trial on the charges, uh, charging, they, they were accused of lying to the FBI, and both were slam dunk acquitted, isn't that correct? They were acquitted. And none of the individuals you prosecuted were ever charged with being part of a hoax or a fraud or a witch hunt or a politically motivated deep state conspiracy against Donald Trump. Isn't that correct? I would not say that that's accurate. You mean you did charge somebody with being a part of a hoax? We charged Mr. Sussman with having knowingly provided false information to the FBI regarding Alpha Bank. But he, lying was, he was acquitted, though, right? After well, that wasn't your question. He, well, he was, Mr. Sussman was acquitted after you charged him, correct? Grand jury found He was probably. found innocent by a jury of, uh, by a unanimous jury of 12. That's not true. Well. What's true uh, is the grand jury found probable cause to indict uh, Mr. Uh, Sussman. Uh, a jury of a his peers jury. acquitted him, though, correct? And a trial jury. You're not, you're not going to disagree on that, are you, uh, Mr. Durham? I'm going to try to answer your question as well. It was asked. Well, let me ask you this, because in your report, you uh, related or alluded to allegations of misconduct against Mr. Sussman and Mr. Danchenko as if those allegations had been proven had been proven true at trial, when in fact both those individuals had been acquitted and your allegations disproven, do you believe that it's ethical to state something as a fact in an official government report when the court system found that you could not prove those allegations? Well, I think if you read the report, you'd see that we talked about the results of the trial, and we included all of the evidence that we had available, unfortunately not all of which was admitted at trial. Well, well let me ask you this, Mr. Durham. You closed your investigation after you failed to find that the FBI investigation into Putin's interference in the 2016 election was politically motivated and was a deep state conspiracy against ex-President Trump. You were unable to prove that that was true. That is so what you, we, 
That is not what I was investigating. Well, but you did not find that that was true, correct? You found it to be false, as a matter of fact. If you, if, um, you've had Isn't a that chance, correct? You have a chance to read the report. Well, I did. And and the chairman, can we, the time has expired. Can the gentleman be allowed to answer the question? The gentleman can did, respond. Time the gentleman from Georgia has expired. The witness can respond. He's saying, if you, if you read the report, we lay the facts out in the report as to these matters. I'm not here to talk about Mr. Trump. I'm not here to talk about um, deep state or whatever other um, characterizations you made. This report is factual. Nobody's raised any issues as to whether it's factually inaccurate uh, in any way. People can draw their own conclusions based on those facts. Yep. Mr. Drum, you've been at it an hour and a half here. We can keep going. If you can keep going, uh, just let us know when, if and when you meet. Yeah, you, I'm uh, fine. Whatever okay, the great. committee wants. Chair, now to. recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Issa. Mr. Durham, uh, each of us on the panel has a different background and a different uh, idea of what's best to get out of this report and the work that you have done so faithfully, not just for the last four years, but for your entire career. So I'm going to start off by asking, uh, uh, is it true that you have uh, the Attorney General's Exceptional Service Award uh, a decoration for your service? That's true. Is it also true that you uh, have the uh, Attorney General's Distinguished Service Award? That's true. And uh, who awarded you that? You know, it goes back in time. Attorney General Reno uh, had... No, no, 2012. Oh, I'm sorry, in 2012. I'm trying to remember what award it was. I, I don't frankly recall. I don't well, really it, just just for the record, it's Eric Holder. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was the CIA investigation. That's right. It's uh, Attorney General Holder. Correct? It was. And uh, you, uh, you had to deal with some of the most despicable people and, and, and do the things that we do sometimes when wrong has been done. Uh, so I want to thank you for that. It seems like for your entire career, you've been a go-to for difficult situations, uh, uh, not necessarily the standard, I, I'm trying to rise quickly award, but in fact, you're a career investigator. And uh, I would imagine pretty closely that you've got your 82% overall. But I want to talk about something that I'm not qualified to talk about, but I can ask you. Are there what you would call unindicted co-conspirators in this? In other words, are there people at all levels who did things wrong, who were not charged with crimes because of the limitation of the ability to bring charges against them for what they did, even if it was wrong? We brought charges where we thought in good faith that we could prove a case beyond a reasonable doubt. Is okay. there, is there but, ev evidence but, beyond that? Of course. Sure. So in your experience as a career prosecutor, when, when people break the rules and it changes the outcome of something, like launching an investigation without a predicate, like uh, the president, the vice president, the attorney general, and a host of others, FBI director, knowing that this had been started with a false predicate, knowing that Hillary Clinton's campaign with her approval, in fact, had authorized this, not op research, but this weaponizing of a false claim. When they did that, they in fact changed the outcome, whether criminal or not, of many things, including certainly some things in voters' minds. Isn't that correct? I mean, generally speaking, there are lots of bad things that people do that aren't crimes. Um, we can only charge those that are crimes. And I appreciate that. So when people are constantly making this point that somehow you didn't put enough people in jail, you gave us 300 pages that give us a responsibility. And uh, as I said, I, I'm not going to try to pretend that I'm the smart lawyer up here at all, or even a lawyer. But I am somebody that understands organization, oversight, and transparency. In your report, you, uh, you do note the changes made and so on. But Unless we make changes in transparency to outside individuals who can be counted on to be ombudsmen to the process, isn't it true that if the president, the vice president, the attorney general, and a host of other top people at the FBI and Department of Justice choose in the future to push to make, cha to make outcomes occur that would not occur according to their own printed rules, that no rule per se is going to change that? I think that's true. As we say in the report, ultimately what this comes down to is the integrity of the people who are doing the job. Are they adhering to their oath or are they not adhering to their oath? Are they following the law or are they not following the law? 
Well, in my 20 plus years uh, on this side of the dais, what I've found is that people, when the light of day is shed on them, follow the rules much better than they aren't. So for all of us up here, I want to thank you for your contributions and your service. Hopefully, I know you're going into, you've gone into retirement, but hopefully in the future, as we begin looking at reforms that can be counted on and believed by the American people, at reforms that create better transparency, at reforms that do not allow FISA judges to be misled by people with an agenda, that you'll be available to at least give us some of the uh, guidance from your decades of knowing how it's done right at the Department of Justice. And Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for your indulgence and so many people. I will not take excess time. I believe this witness's 300 plus pages speaks extremely well for itself, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California is recognized.